the massive volatility that can can accompany uh, the Fed uh, the Fed announcement on interest rates. Uh, quite clearly, everyone is uh, expecting Yellen to uh, say that she will continue pumping money into the market, and um, uh, generally speaking, the market uh, pretty much on almost every occasion has responded positively with a uh, with a strong up day. However, that can be punctuated with pretty dramatic and extreme. Uh, quick moves down of 10 to 20 points, right? Yeah, particularly if pieces of uh, news are misinterpreted. And you also have to remember when you're trying to trade in that, particularly in that initial um, five minute window, that you are competing uh, against uh, news algos. And those news algos are faster than you're ever going to be. Um, they pretty much uh, disseminate uh, the entire statement in milliseconds. Uh, therefore, generally speaking, my edge diminishes uh, significantly or goes away, particularly um, in that 30 minutes to 40 minutes after the initial release. But even then, it can be very, very volatile. Uh, generally speaking, I, uh, I don't trade it unless I'm having a really, really good week or a good month and I have something to work against in case I get run over. Also, stops can get easily run. It gets thin. Uh, right when that, uh, right when the release occurs, um, so most traders psychologically see that as it, um, th when they're initially looking at it, uh, see that as a huge trading opportunity, a place where they can make 10 or 20 points on one trade. But the inverse of that is true as well. And so the question isn't whether you can nail it this time. Out of every Fed meeting, can you nail it uh, the vast majority of the time and have a winning risk reward? Um, I don't think I can on most occasions and I really hate personally getting stopped out moments after I enter a, enter a trade it bugs the daylights out of me so uh, generally speaking uh, I'll tend to uh, avoid it prior to the Fed release um, usually the first hour um, first hour to hour and a half is tradable but after that the market starts to balance uh, in preparation uh, in preparation for the news release so um, at any rate long story short um, I tend to uh, feel my edges diminish to a certain degree. I, I don't like to trade much past the first hour, hour and a half. And my guess is that we'll have a upside bias. Let me see where the where we're trading right now. Okay, so we've backed off a bit on NQ. So let's get to work here. Hold on one second. I've got my drawing tools really quick. Okay, so uh, currently trading 1865 and three quarters. We had a relatively narrow range overnight, so I'm going to expand this. Um, let's see, 1865.75. And what you'll see is, um, so I've been moving the, I've been moving these numbers around, and what I'll do is, if Globex high stays where it is, I'll simply adjust the zone for Tuesday's high to encompass uh, Globex high right here. So you know before the open if that if that remains the high uh, at a you know 10 minutes till or 5 minutes till I'll simply adjust the zone. If we get up here uh, I will um, uh, if we get up here I'll adjust um, this zone up here to uh, uh, to cover it. What I won't do is put a zone in between the 1867 and 1870, uh, it's simply um, there's not enough space to pit a zone. There's a problem, right? So um, at any rate, I'll see how how this looks uh, as we get closer to the open. Hopefully, it just stays right where it is. You'll also notice that uh, Globex low we had a really narrow range, and so therefore I'm not going to uh, once again I'm not going to create it as a zone. Uh, depending on the size of the rotation, I may or may not take a trade right at Globex high. Um, as you can see yesterday, um, and I'll pull up the chart in a moment, uh, Globex high, we had the same situation. It provided a point of uh, pause and resistance. However, it did not uh, provide a good trade to the downside. Obviously, we ended up with a, a pseudo open drive higher. It was more of a, a strong open followed by a strong, uh, strong buying soon after, right? So again, I'll be cautious on this Globex high, particularly if we, if we open where we open. Uh, I 
Um, I have not decided whether I'll take the short there, but if I do, either way, unless there's a big rotation, I won't be calling it out. So this is my first uh, decent trade location. The only problem with this is last time we were in this area, um, we traded down through it very quickly. Uh, when a zone can get traded through quickly on one side, it can get traded through quickly on the other side. And so I'll have to see how price action behaves up here before automatically taking a trade. The first place where, I'll, where I can tell you I will take a short, again, this is in the morning, will be up here, right? Um, again, this offers a, a couple of attractive, uh, this area offers a couple of attractive things for me. First of all, um, if we open up um, eight, uh, 1866, uh, the back of this zone gives me a 10-point rotation, and and even if um, even if the rotation is small, the rotation is smaller. Um, in, in other words, we open above Globex highs, it, it'll still give me good trade location, right? Uh, the only reason I would not take a trade in this area is if we consolidate for an extended period of time in front of that zone. That would be the only reason that would make me pull this order. But somewhere between middle to back of this zone. Uh, I'll be placing an order uh, to take a short side trade. Also, I'll want this trade to work, again, in a fairly reasonable amount of time. I'm fine to continue break even on these trades when I'm taking contra trades when we're moving up so strongly. Also consider the time. If you'll look at yesterday's uh, time frame, we, we reversed right at 9.30 a.m. Um, after the first hour and before New York lunch, that's prime time for getting uh, good spots. To have reversals again, I would say that after 9:30, we're more likely to. Let's say we some we mm -hmm. managed to trade up to this 1876. I would say after 9:30, we're more likely to go into balance. Okay. Now remember, just because we're in balance, doesn't mean we can't have an extended range. What that means is we can get up here, and we can rotate all the way back down to test Globex high, and then come all the way back up. It can be a 10-point range, up and down. Uh, or a nine point range, it can also consolidate like this. If we trade through this zone, which is a possibility, I want to point this out in the morning. If we trade through this zone without getting any kind of pause in here or rejection lower, uh, we can just as easily uh, trade through here on the way back down. Uh, more importantly, after the Fed is released in this zone, I'll pretty much be skipping this area, because, um, particularly if we don't auction it well again in the morning. Now, if we sit here all morning long and we re-auction this area, uh, that opinion will change. But as of now, if we open up and let's say we don't get above Globex high this morning and we stay in a narrow range, when the Fed uh, when the Fed releases, I will not be looking for a short here. Also, very important, if I were to trade uh, the Fed or if I'm looking at the Fed, Minimum, minimum of 10 point rotations from swing lows and swing highs before I'm willing to take a trade, and preferably 20 points uh, of rotation. I want to double because I'm going to assume, and if we have time and I can get back there quick enough, I'll go over uh, one of the older Fed days. I'm going to assume we're going to double our or potentially double our range. Now, what that means is normally we have, uh, we've had lately on a quiet day 10 to 20 point ranges on a aggressive day uh, including the overnight we've had 30 point ranges if I'm going to assume a double that means potentially 60 points up or down so what does that what does that look like on the chart okay so um, if we look at assuming from from the open right if we were trading here let me correct that from wherever we're trading prior to the news, I'll treat that 1 p.m. news release as a new open and I'll give it uh, potentially two areas. I'm gonna, the first thing I want to know is 60 points lower and 60 points higher. Not that I think we'll hit it, but if we do, if something happens that no one expects, I want to at least know what that location looks like. Um, in this particular case, if we work simply off the open, that's 1803. Um, I can tell you down at 1803, there's uh, between 1800 and 1803, there's very good support in that area. Um, on the upside, right, obviously that pits us at 1920. Um, again, not uh, difficult to, to imagine, but not impossible, right? We've had days, uh, if you go back and look at October, where we have had just massive updates. So, um, and then I would also cut that in half, right, from wherever we're trading. Um, go just prior to that one o'clock, 
go and look what's 30 down, what's 30 up. Now we won't again necessarily hit that, but I want to know those locations if I'm going to trade it because I want the market nice and stretched if I'm going to take a, tr a contra trade in those areas. I will not try to momentum trade um, that news. Um, and if we get to the point where, let's say we get the news and we get a big spike, for example. Uh, let's say the spike is 10 to 15 points. I am going to look 10 points lower for my trade entry. So um, just hypothetically, so I don't have to move this thing all over the screen. If we were to spike, uh, for whatever reason, let's say we were trading 1850, we spike up here. And we go, oh, there's a, there's a uh, potential trend day up. I'm looking minimum of 10 points back lower, uh, perhaps even 15 points lower, to see if I can't get a, a trade location for a move back up. Also, it's very possible, and again, I'll show you this in a moment, that we move like this. Here, let me bring this in. This would not be um, a difficult move to envision. 1872 brings up 1852, uh, followed by, in the same five or 10 minute span, 1877 or higher. Remember, 1877 and three quarters gets us over the year to date high um, and also sets up a potential trap trade, which I'll go over in just a moment. Okay? These are, again, all things to, um, um, these are all things to consider uh, when looking at uh, trading uh, after the Fed releases its information. Okay? And this is exactly why uh, I simply don't like to put on risk, even if I take a trade, which, again, I doubt that I will. Um, I would do probably 25% of what I normally trade. Now, here's the problem. If you have a small account and you're trading one contract, you don't have the ability to reduce risk. Okay, So consider whether you could want to handle a 10-point down day because if the stop under normal circumstances behind a zone is two points and the market within five minutes or 10 minutes is having a 15-point range, your two point your two point stop statistically speaking has a massive odds of getting taken out even if it's just in a 30 second whipsaw like this you enter here it just gives a quick whip down because there's so much volume running through and then you have it run up the reason for all of this is because you have OTF come out that's other time frame and other time frame does not care about our support levels doesn't care about resistance those are hedge fund managers mutual fund managers, pension fund managers, and they are simply making large macro decisions and giving their traders large buy and large sell orders. And they pretty much don't care because they're looking way down the road. Okay, And because of that and because of the massive influx of volume, zones get run over. So I can't stress enough, it's just one day. The casino is open 24 hours a day. It'll open again tomorrow. Don't take a massive hit that'll take you a week, two weeks, a month to recover and can be psychologically dam damaging to your ability to trust yourself to take a safe trade. And that trust issue becomes very important on a day-by-day -day basis if you want consistency. Uh, and, and at the same time, reducing the stress and anxiety that comes from trading pretty naturally. Okay, so let's discuss, uh, since this whole thing is pretty much foobar until one you know, after one o'clock, let's discuss prior to one o'clock. Okay, overnight, we've had a relatively uh, tight range. 67 down to 61 is six points. Okay, so we know that there haven't been very many sellers off of the open and that um, buyers pretty much got bought up on the first dip there in a minute or two. I would suspect we're going to see responsive buyers pretty quickly this morning. Uh, if we don't, right, we know the game plan changes and we start looking lower, right? So from 1865 let's call it right here. If we open at 1865, once again, the first area that I'm looking for, actually for, for my highest odds trades, is actually going to be up here in this zone, right here, where I would look for resistance. It is possible to get up here prior to the Fed. Uh, we usually don't have a run, but again, we were closing up or uh, near the highs yesterday, and this isn't, um, this is not an extreme edge given that, um, excuse me, extreme stretch, given that we've had 20 to 30 point ranges on strong days, and then even on balance days, we've had 10 to 15 point ranges 
uh, even stretching to 20 on occasion. So this is not a stretch. And uh, if we get up here, again, I will take a trade. And I would, and I quite possibly might not do anything in this area, okay? If you do take this area, right, I would make sure that you get a good rotation. So if we open 1867.50 and we trade up, okay, you have to make a risk decision. If I were going to take this zone, I would take the very back. But look at the problems that this possibly creates. First of all, two points higher is your stop and also the front of the next zone. So uh, for me, if I take the back, this has to work quickly. And once I get a rotation lower, if I take the back of this, let's say it rotates a point, point and a half down, I'm probably moving my stop right to break even. If it works, it works. If it gets stopped, oh well. But, but mentally, it is very difficult for most traders, particularly newer traders, to take a trade here, not get a two-point rotation, then come right up here, get stopped, right? And then have to take the trade. Usually what that results in is that they skip this zone. And this zone is stronger than this zone today. Okay, so that's my two cents on that. Um, above that, right, and just behind here, we have a uh, we have the year-to-date high. So what does that mean? That means if for some reason we're trading above 1877 when the news comes out, there's nothing above here besides exhaustion points to stop us from rolling higher. When you take that into consideration, and you add that we have OTF coming out to play, um, there can be a large upside move in this thing, larger than most people, I think, anticipate, because there will be no uh, automatic resistance coming in. It, there, all these zones, this zone up here, this is simply an exhaustion calculation is all it is. It does not have to reverse here. I would need to see price action confirm that this is the area. In addition, um, the move up here and out of here can be so quick that if I'm looking at price action, I might not have the ability to actually take a trade in this area. So my, tr my better trade out of this area or up here would be rotations of 10 to 15 points lower if we do break up here, looking for rotations back up from that rotation down as opposed to standing in the way of a, um, as opposed to standing in the way of OTF driving this higher. Also, you got to consider caches of position as far as institutions are concerned. Um, I do not know, I don't think anyone knows, how much cash is on the sidelines. But if you look at um, last year's performance, those guys haven't forgot the ones who stayed in cash. A lot of people, including myself, ass uh, assumed that we would have a rather uh, uh, go back to a normal plus or minus 6% year. But if we get above these highs year to date, that memory of getting smoked to the upside um, and given the strength of the move uh, that we've had to the upside, right, we've barely been able to get any 2% is the correction we've had since uh, February. We've had one 2% correction. It essentially lasted a day and a half. Um, so looking at that concept, right, if you're, there are not many professional shorts still short. If they are still short, when we get above year to date, those guys are going to be one of the first to cover. Second, Cash is a position. Cash, if we get to new year-to-date highs, those guys in cash, um, they'll try to be as patient as they can, but those guys have a breaking point too, right? Most managers are not great traders. Um, and so they will throw, if they decide that that being long cash is affect being short the market, right, because they're, they're underperforming, you could end up with a cash short squeeze up to the upside, okay? So keep that in mind when you're trading after 1 o'clock. Obviously, I do not think... We're going to get up here uh, prior to 1 o'clock at all. Okay, so areas of traps on the upside. I want to cover this very quickly. In the morning, once we trade above Tuesday's high, which is right here, and Globex high, which is right behind it, right? If we trade up and we close on a 5-minute bar here or higher, and then we proceed to trade beneath Globex high and Friday's high, okay? And then we do not close back above. That would be the strongest way to get a. Um, that would be the strongest way to get a trap trade. That would create a move to the other side of the range. Keep in mind the other side of the range, or that creates a potential target. Let me correct my statement. That would create a potential target to the other end of the range, and we would have two targets in that particular case. Okay, one I don't think is attainable. The other one is. 
Um, so first of all, we would have um, uh, Globex Low would be our first potential target. And again, that would be a decent move, 1867 down to 1861. I would expect to find responsive buyers down here the first time through, given a trap situation. Okay. Um, the next target that I would actually um, think would be a reasonable area uh, would be the white zone right here. And the reason I say that is what this would set up is most people are going to look at this right here, 1860 area, this 1861, as potential support. But if it breaks or people get nervous, right, we could easily slip underneath, come into the white zone, snap back above Globex lows, and then trade back up to Globex high. Again, we could just end up with a total dud where nothing happens all morning long. So these are just potential um, scenarios to set up potential traps from below and above. Um, but I'm not overly eager to pull the trigger on anything this morning. Uh, I, I want the market to prove that there's actually a range. I want the market to prove, and very importantly, that there's actually counter rotations. If we look um, at yesterday's move, notice how there were no counter rotations all the way through here. And even when we, this is a 15 minute chart, even when we got up here, right, we got hung up in here for, um, it was a long period of time, I forget, I forget how long we got hung up in here for, but it was long enough to get me to stop and uh, cover my trade, right? Also, be aware intraday, okay, so wait, let me finish my thought and then I'll move on to this, it's 813. Okay, so from anywhere below here, um, getting back above Globex low would create the trade, the potential trap trade. Now you got to remember that trap trade has been working very well from the long side. It's been harder from the short side above. Uh, anyone who uh, uses that trade, um, and for the most part, I'm going to assume that's my coaching clients um, that I've set that up for. Um, everyone knows that this trade can get stopped out. And so you need to use the swing highs. Also, you may have to lower trade position in order to make this uh, trade work and be able to hang in in case we get a run back up to test the high and then roll over. Okay, uh, from the downside, if we fail to get back above Globex lows right here, I would expect responsive buyers the first time into the white zone, but just like Thursday, if we get, for whatever reason, uh, pre-fed selling, right, and we start consolidating in this zone, a test of Tuesday's low is certainly possible, okay? Um, if we hold Tuesday's low, once again, the test of Globex low, it's very probable. All of this before Fed is, is pretty unmanageable to me, but I need to go over the scenario. So I know what to do and you know what to do. Again, we get back above. That means I would expect a run back to Tuesday's high. Remember, Tuesday's high is not the front of the zone. It's the back of the zone. And I think at this point it's safe to say the zone's now going to be 1867.50 uh, down to 1865.50. So please adjust that by half a point. To the upside, again, mm -hmm. if I were going to take a short here, it'd have to be at the very back, and it pretty much would have to be pretty tight, two points behind, and you cannot be shocked if you get stopped uh, right at the back there, given how strong the drives were the last two days. Um, and this is really, if you look at why this market has been so hard to trade, if you go back to last week, um, pretty much the best trades were the first test of Globex high, and then we ended up with this to the downside, right? This, this stuff... Um, really throws off traders, right? Because you go, oh, here's a new rhythm. We've now come to Globex high, I can take the short, and we're going to roll to the downside. Well, the next thing you know, you're taking a shot. This was uh, the shot right here yesterday, Globex highs, I believe. Um, you take the shot to the downside, you barely get rotation, then it blows you out. And for a lot of traders, retail traders in particular, who aren't used to switching gears very quickly, that creates frustration and pain and can also lead to over trading and digging a hole. So consider the small rotations are harder to trade, the big rotations much easier to trade. Uh, wanted to go, let's see, I, th I think I've covered all the scenarios out of the gate. Uh, again, remember we are gapping up two, gap fill is right here. Uh, not worth, there's not enough rotation into it again to make it uh, at all interesting to me. Uh, I want to show you down here, by the way. This area. Okay. Our first open gap is all the way down here at 1832. If we were to get down here again, particularly on a huge rotation, I'm actually willing to lose money 
uh, on Fed News in this area. My stop would be the same, two points behind. Um, uh, consider if this is a straight drive down into this area, all bets could be off. Also, consider if we're whipping very hard, very quickly. Basically, you end up with that in a very short period of time, right? You may want to consider cutting size in half and doubling your stop, and even then, it may not be enough to save you to stay in the trade. We could easily blow through here, come back up, and go higher. Also, below this 1833.31, there's a lot of uh, poorly auctioned area. Also, this area from... really below initial support all the way down to this open gap is relatively well it's actually it is poorly auctioned area right what does that mean a poorly auctioned area can get very quickly traded through till we get to support now once it gets traded through we can rotate back up what does that mean it means in a fast market this zone 1839 to 1837 and a quarter to 1839 and a quarter is suspect to get blown out. The rotation will clearly, and you notice I left plenty of room between zones. The rotation should be enough to get a pause at this area, okay? But don't be shocked if, uh, if we get one of those quick rotations and the second time down it busts for move down to support. Also, do not be surprised if we get into support, especially if it's a flash down and we reverse all the way back up. Okay, if you go back and look at the Fed uh, Fed Day in November, uh, that was certainly the case where we rotated lower very quickly and then shot up. Um, I don't remember the last Fed release, so I'm going to go see if I can find it really quick. Uh, so mark on your charts this area in between these two points uh, can be very slippery, and that's why there's so few zones in here. I want to make sure that I get nice fat stretches before I take a trade here. I would rather see um, a trap trade take a place. Also, first hour highs and lows, watch for those uh, today if we have a wide range uh, for support. Um, okay, I think I covered ES well enough. Everyone should have a good idea of both pre-market, uh, pre-Fed, and post-Fed. What how am I doing on time? 819. Quickly, wanted to go to this chart here very fast. Okay, this... Um, 1845 to 1840 is halfway. Let me remove this fib. Well, let's see. Let's cover, color it. This is halfway back from this swing low to yesterday's high. Okay. This uh, this is also a potential area of support. I'm pretty sure I put a zone right in here. I would expect buyers somewhere in here, right? And keep in mind, this is 1845. This is 1840. Okay. There's a wide range of area. Don't buy it here and think, oh, well, we could do this. We certainly could in that area, but look at the size stop that's going to require to take it on. Instead, I would treat each area as a potential point of reversal and base it off of price action as opposed to simply just taking the top um, blindly. Okay, the second thing I want to point out here, let's see, let's, we'll just put that zone there. Okay, um, 1840 to 1845, halfway back. Now I can get rid of that quickly. And if I were you, I would, I would have these um, on here. And I want to show you something really quickly. Okay. In addition... To, um, to this halfway back. Uh, oh, I know what I want to show. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay, the, um, the channels here. So um, what these are here, these are um, levels where we plateaued before running, uh, before moving to the downside. Uh, this is obviously the all-time high right up here at 1880.50. All-time high, year-to-date high, excuse me. Well, it's actually would be a new high there as well um, on a... Uh, multi-year basis. Um, uh, let me get, uh, let me finish this thought process. Okay, so you, you can see how we held these channels for the most part, but you can see on the bottom how we can break out of these channels. 
then break back into the channel and make an attempt to trade to the other end. Right? And you can see that again where we break this channel to the upside and the downside. The reason why they're important is because you can see in general how they're respected, right? We go from one end of the range to the other end of the range, right? Come back down, we mm, I didn't want to do that. We break the range, right? So this provide now this is a 30 minute bar, keep in mind. So we don't know what the um, trade action actually looked like in here, but you can see we broke um, we broke above this um, the upper band of the channel, right? And when we broke above, keep in mind how much this was. Essentially, this was 1847 ish, all the way up to 1857. But then you'll see, and this is a 24 hour chart by the way. Then you'll see we broke back into the channel, came back to the backside test of this down channel, right, and found responsive buyers there. Um, so. Keep in mind, right, we can break out of the channels and back down. It's simply when you're at the bottom end of the channel, look for structure, look for um, zones and support areas being tested that would align where, where these channels are lining up, okay, to find potential uh, support and resistance areas. Um, I want to see if I had anything else. And again, you can see this channel right here is very strong. It's very possible on this down channel that we're simply upside testing over here. Again, if you look how much we've broken this channel, this is sitting at approximately 1882. Um, if we had a 10 point stretch like we did here, we could trade all the way up into 1772, even 75, and uh, A, still be within the channel, uh, but also fall back into this channel and trade back to the other end of the range, or even fall out and come all the way down for a backside test. All this does is kind of give me a clue that right now, buyers are in control, it's easier to the upside, and I'd want to see this channel broken, certainly, before I got big fantasies of us rolling down to the downside. Of course, this bars the Fed announcement as well, because, again, we can just simply break it. Um, I want to see if, if um, oh, one more thing, on... I would also go, by the way, to a day time frame. This is a 24-hour chart, and I would look for what the larger channels are on either a 30-minute or a one-hour chart to get an idea of what it looks like on the day time frame. I monitor both time frames from a uh, channel perspective. Uh, let's see if I have NQ here real quick. I do. Okay. The reason this is all in blue down here, and I will uh, uh, post... I don't know if I'm going to post this on uh, StockTwits. I will uh, send it out to my clients. The reason why this is all in blue, this is all that same area again. And actually, I should be pushing it up just a bit. Um, all of this right down to this gap, everything down here is poorly auctioned. And what that means, again, is simply if we fail to get responsive buyers off of this open gap on NQ, um, this area can get traded through very quickly before finding support. There's another open gap th at approximately 3621, and I would expect responsive buyers at that point, and it is possible to get a ricochet. Again, this is something that I would look at. If you look at the stretch, let's just say we're trading 3700, right? Down to 3620, that's a 80-point stretch. Normally, I would be uh, pretty hard to believe, but not on Fed Day, right? We could easily get down here, and we could actually get down here in less than 10 or 15 minutes. Find responsive buyers. And then get all the way back up here. All it would take would be something to say that to give negative inclinations about the Fed's um, desire to maintain QE, and you would get a massive reaction from the Twitter, not from the Twitter, from the algo feeds. Okay, then a quick push back up. So I'd like everyone to keep that in mind. Again, I'd go to a larger chart as well and look at what the channels are. And also importantly, notice higher highs, higher lows through this entire move. You might want to see that change before getting overly aggressive to the downside so you don't get frustrated with trying to push your shorts too far. Um, again, that's just from a day trading perspective. Not, um, I don't have a, a concept on the larger time frame of where we're moving to uh, in, in the bigger picture. Um, at 3600 and 36, uh, excuse me, 3590 to 3600 is also strong support down there. Okay, guys, that's all I have. Um, it is four minutes till. Okay, it looks like no one had any questions or no one shot me any questions. Remember, it's just one day. If you take a stop, don't keep burying yourself on a day like today. These are hard. 
Uh, and I know most of my friends who are professional traders that trade concentrated size, right? And, and so, again, they're scalpers, okay, essentially, or they're counter-rotation traders. Most of those guys that I know take the day off, okay? And even if, they're, if they are trading, they are not trading large positions post, uh, post the first hour and a half. Uh, they just lose their edge on a day like today. The volatility gets too high, and no one likes digging a hole. Once you get used to stacking chips up and making regular profits on your trades, um, making a winning trade on a daily basis, in other words, um, if you scratch or you have no trade opportunities uh, that appear, it doesn't bother those traders because they know when they have their days that they're going to make big money. And the problem with small accounts is just as you're trying to build that account so quickly because you want to make big money that it becomes very hard to make a good decision a non-emotional decision to go, hey, this may be too hard for me, and I'd rather pass on the opportunity than take the chance that I'm going to get whipped, right? Anyways, food for thought. I hope everyone has a great idea. My name is Simon. You can reach me at tradingperform at gmail.com, and uh, have a great day. See you all.